Hey everybody, so this particular research paper is called Memory Decoder, a pre-trained plug-and-play memory for large language models, and it's put out by Lumia Lab, uh, Shanghai AI Lab, and Department of Electrical Engineering, and as well as uh, Xinhua University in Beijing. And so, I think I pronounced that right. <laughs> and so, uh, essentially, this research paper, it is another unique method for uh, memory when it comes to LLM models and AI models overall. And uh, I've been paying attention and noticing more and more research around these things. I have my own uh, like memory uh, models that I've built out uh, around these things as well. And within that and around these things, uh, essentially the big picture is, is, is that, and like, I want to start there is, is that, um, memory for AI is not, uh, going to look like and be what memory is for a computer. Uh, it will likely be what's like memory closer to what is memory for a human, but not necessarily, uh, based off of what is memory for a human. Right. And then, so, um, that's kind of where it's at with that <laughs> overall and right now. And then it's a big uh, problem and a big challenge to, to solve within AI, right? Like, so like uh, how exactly do you give the model like an actual long-term memory? Like um, just giving it access to like RAM or massive notebooks or massive databases, et cetera, doesn't actually give it memory. It doesn't encode the memory uh, into anything, right? And then so uh, with that in mind, that's what this particular method does. And then so if you're familiar with the actual architecture of uh, AI models and, and the transformer architecture very specifically, the transformer architecture relies on a on a encoder and a decoder. Encoder does most of the work, right? The decoder is just essentially, uh, it, the decoder is very small compared to the encoder, first of all. Uh, and then the de decoder is basically just a, a translator, right? It's just essentially uh, translating whatever is encoded by the encoder uh, into like actual text. Uh, and then that's essentially the, the job of the decoder. In this particular instance, they treat the decoder as a memory module. Uh, and then essentially uh, by training it on the data set, but very specifically, this is a concept that I've gone over numerous times on this channel, and it's this entire concept is built on top, uh, off of it, is that it's not actually training uh, and memorizing and, and creating memories off of the data set itself, but rather like a, a geometric abstraction of the data set. And then within this, they're utilizing K nearest neighbors as the calculation for that, which makes 1 million percent sense overall. There's a few videos that I've gone over on this channel where I've introduced a concept called K furthest neighbors. Uh, and then so I'm like 100% positive that if you link uh, this particular framework here, uh, and then with my K furthest neighbors algorithm, uh, that you would have something like a brand new uh, within that as a, when it comes to uh, this particular concept overall, but I'll just leave that there for this particular video uh, overall. Um, yeah, and so uh, diving into uh, what we're looking at with this particular research paper here. Uh, again, as uh, mentioned, so essentially the um, current methods for uh, like a uh, like a training uh, models are LoRa or the other method is is that they list out here domain ad ad adaptive pre-training or DAPT uh, and then essentially those are the the, the two uh, and rag uh, but rag doesn't actually update any sort of uh, internal weights overall right and so that's why I uh, leave rag separate from this but so essentially, um, within this, you've got like your, you know, you say your LoRa process, your RAG process, and then they're, they're, uh, what they're introducing here, which is, uh, again, so it's just training that decoder part of the transformer and then the decoder part of the transformer is uh, very small. And then, so, uh, as a perfect illustration of that here, uh, 
you can see uh, within the the uh, research paper here, right? So they've got um, the different models and then the different uh, parameter counts. And then so uh, the smallest model that they have uh, listed here is uh, uh, Quen 2.5, and then they have it at like 0 0.5 billion parameters. Uh, whereas, and you can see uh, this, like uh, their memory decoder is the, the uh, lowest on the parameter count out of any of these uh, model uh, methods. So it's uh, smaller than 500 mil, uh, million parameters. It's smaller than your typical LoRa training method, which is, a, let's call it like 200 to 300 million parameters. Uh, we're talking about like uh, in this range, like 100 million parameters or less, like like according to this this graph here, right? Like so, And then you can adjust and play with that. Like you can add parameters to it. And I'll show you like how you can uh, update them and play around with that overall. But so this is what we're looking at. The, the, the beauty of this method is that, that it's um, very uh, memory efficient, computationally efficient, uh, and then uh, especially compared to, to LoRa overall, right? This The competing method to this, to me, in my mind, would be LoRa, right? It, it's that essentially uh, LoRa method is uh, taking a, a small amount of parameters and then building an additional latent space with those parameters and essentially kind of just bolting that on to the existing latent space of the model uh, and then utilizing it that way, right? Whereas what this does is it's, taking the decoder and then replacing the existing decoder and then re um, replacing it with a, a decoder that's actually been trained on whatever, like uh, I'll use, I, I like to utilize the example of Harry Potter, right? the book Harry Potter. And then so uh, this model is trained on this particular memory decoder is trained on the book Harry Potter and not the whole entire model, the encoder, right? Like the, the uh, main model isn't, it's just like the, the, the translator, like that's the only part of it that is uh, trained on Harry Potter, but then it just essentially plugging that into the model and then having that be the translator gives the model access to the Harry Potter data, <laughs> basically is the simplest and most is simplest overall um, way to to explain that right and then so you just the only thing that you need to do within this then is is to train the the little and decoder on harry potter in this instance um and then so um that's essentially what they do within all of the math and then so uh as you can as mentioned here so a lot of this is is uh centered around as far as the mathematics k nearest neighbors as i mentioned before and then just mentioning it again, I, like, I'm, I'm positive like, it, with uh, exactly how this is constructed, what their method is, what they're doing, that you could improve upon their method there. Uh, and then uh, pre-training, it's very straightforward, right? It's, it's, it's essentially, it's all set up. I, I'll give you access to essentially, I've rebuilt like literally this, right? And so that's what I'm gonna give you in, in the collab notebook here. Uh, is there a specific example? They give all of the math here, and then so it's it's very easy to uh, just build it out and replicate it from there. And then so essentially from there, they you can see that they they test it um, across different uh, methods, different models, uh, and then different frameworks. Um, and then so uh, you have their method against LoRa, against DAPT, against uh, in context rag tuning, uh, and then against like uh, just utilizing like um, K nearest neighbors and and, and th that as the guide guidance mechanism within this. So again, like it's uh, this whole entire concept, what they're tr training off of, what they are um, doing within this is is like um, recognizing that there's a geometric element that is underlying the data set, and then tuning the model to that geometric element overall. Like I mean, uh, exactly what I've been telling you on this channel for two years overall. Like I'm just highlighting that as a subset within this particular research paper here. Uh, and then, so here uh, we go through, uh, and then, you know, so here's exactly what they're doing, uh, and then testing against again, and then just more and more benchmark, resu benchmark results against these particular methods. And then, so according to their benchmark results, it's proving out uh, very strongly against uh, these methods overall. Like. Um, you can, you know, go like benchmarks are benchmarks, right? But uh, it's easy to game these uh, one way or another. But like it, uh, having 
tested the method overall in some way, in, in at least a basic sense, it works overall. Um, so I can prove <laughs> that, that their method actually works. Uh, and they give everything that you need here, right? Like, so they give all of the math um, and essentially like a, 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 a sample use cases, case studies, et cetera. And then so it was easy to, to essentially replicate based off of this. Uh, and then they have, you know, like, uh, everything, like, like everything like that you need as far as the, the structure of it here and the appendix. And then, so we go here to the actual collab notebook. And then, so here it is memory decoder. Uh, this notebook provides a clean end to end demo of the research paper that we just looked at memory decoder as outlined in the paper, memory decoder, a pre-trained plug and play memory for large language models. It's trained to mimic their exact methodology within this so that KNN retrieval distributions over a small domain corpus, then interpolated with a frozen base LLM utilizing GPT-2, exactly as they do in the research paper there at inference time. Pipeline is to one, build a tiny domain data store utilizing and using a frozen GPT-2 model where we extract the hidden keys plus the next tokens. Two is to use FAISS to perform the KNN uh, calculations and build sparse token distributions. Then we train a compact memory decoder. Then we utilize that for inference to interpolate base LLM and utilizing their method, that, that the memory decoder method of probabilities uh, with the math that they lay out. Um, and then essentially that's uh, the model that we're looking at here. Uh, so essentially here's everything that you need, like within this, you want to run these and, and install these specific packages uh, just to make sure that everything <laughs> works within this. So just highlighting that. Uh, also too, within this notebook, so you want to run it on a GPU and then the very first time that you run it, you're gonna hit an error, like uh, because you want to, uh, you have to uh, restart the notebook. Uh, and then so just run it, restart it, and then you'll be good. Uh, and then so, Here's where you can control everything, right? Like this is a like your control panel. Like consider this like um, your your dashboard. Uh, but I'm not a front end dev. I'm a back end dev, right? So so here you go. Uh, and then so uh, within that, essentially within your dashboard, you can change the the domain data set. You can can ch change the configuration of the data set and domain. Uh, and then so max tokens, sequence length, and then anything that you would want to adjust within this, right? Uh, training steps, batch size, etc. And then so uh, pulling these levers, of course, making these numbers much bigger is going to make it much better, but then may take it much longer to run. Um, and then so your base model, and, and then again, you can update this too, right? You could update this to GPT-5. Uh, and then again, it would be uh, more expensive to run and then you would have to pay for that too, <laughs> which is that's not set up within this, right? It's GPT-2 is free. So there you go, just highlighting these things. Uh, and then uh, from here, it's essentially just loading the, the data set and then the training sequences. Uh, and then this is just loading the, the um, sample training data set there. I'll go down to the end result. So here's our, our actual training, right? And then, so here's our loss. Uh, the loss is kind of uh, up and down within this. So uh, I'll highlight this, right? Like, so within like, th like looking at um, this here, I would want to tune this model, right? Like I think that there's a, a lot of a 100%, a lot of room for improvement uh, on these numbers. This was just setting it up just to make sure that I'm like, getting this as uh, accurate to, as I can to the research paper as written out with all of the math that's uh, within that. Uh, and then from here, I would uh, tweak it, tune it, et cetera, right? And I'm a million percent positive that you can get these numbers uh, better and, and, and stable, but these numbers are, are not, uh, this loss is not stable, right? This model's not stably learning the memory inputs uh, within this. And then, so I just want to call that out and highlight with that within this. And then you can see that from, from the outputs here, right? So, uh, we have it generate, uh, this, which is, uh, in a surprising turn of events. And then remember this is, it's training just from that, like that Wikipedia data set. So, and, and it's surprising turn of events, Turnbull, the Herald reported same pit snake across Thailand, Pirani, and is at, so you can see it, like it, it, it um, and again, this is GPT-2, so, so the output might be, it might have been bad originally, but it's making it worse overall. It, like, and then that's, again, like, I, I, I mean, I already know that that's going to happen just by looking at this, right? And then, so again, I could make 
tweaks and improvements within this. Um, but this is just like uh, a, a, a trying to be as faithful to the research paper as laid out as uh, possible um, and not tweaking anything within it. Um, and then so um, just here, here's like a bunch of, you know, here's additional notes uh, and then things that you can do. Uh, and then also too, again, like um, they probably, and, and, and uh, they don't, they don't lay out exactly like um, uh, what they're utilizing for max tokens, et cetera. I'm assuming that they, they, they tested uh, much higher with much higher tokens. Uh, and they also did utilize uh, Quen2 tests as well as in um, top of GPT2 tests. So just highlighting a lot of things uh, within that overall. I think this method is super cool. Uh, again, it, the, the benefit of this is that, that it's uh, lightweight um, and then it fits uh, to me, at least what I think, and uh, you know, what do I know? Like, I don't know anything, but like uh, what I think that memory uh, should be and will be within uh, AI models overall. And then perhaps potentially and probabilistically, it's going to be a combination of several of these methods, right? Like a, a uh, combination of a memory within the decoder uh, and then memory utilizing other um, internal technologies overall, things like that. So just highlighting that overall, again, I'll leave a link to this research paper here, which is, uh, again, Memory Decoder, a pre-trained plug and play memory for large language models, uh, and then as well as this Colab notebook. And if you like this type of content overall, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.